When we look at the progress in computing performance in the last 30 years, we can see consistent growth in the first 35 years up until around 2004, from which point the core frequency stagnated, peaking at about 5 GHz in 2008 and remaining mostly in that range up until now. This is a trend that will continue in the next 5 to 10 years and performance increases with both CPUs and GPUs will get smaller and smaller with each generation. The end of Moore's law doesn't affect just CPUs, so just like AMD and Intel are reaching parity in the CPU space, AMD's GPUs will also reach performance parity with Nvidia's GPUs in the not too distant future, it's inevitable. So imagine a future where it no longer matters who you buy a GPU from, because they will perform exactly the same. How can Nvidia maintain their massive market share? Marketing will go a long way, of course, and we can't underestimate Nvidia's mindshare over the average consumer. But no matter how popular the brand, mindshare alone is not a sustainable strategy in the long run if their products don't offer a performance advantage also. Well, not only does Nvidia have a plan to stay ahead of AMD in a scenario where their GPUs reach parity, they've set their plan in motion many years ago. A pivotal moment in the history of GPU development was when a guy called Ian Buck joined Nvidia in 2004 to create CUDA. CUDA is a programming language similar to C that lets developers assign one data element to a thread. So instead of having 4, 8 or 12 threads on CPUs, developers have thousands of threads on GPUs, which means they can perform massive parallel compute instructions. Thanks to CUDA, GPUs went from being simply graphics cards to becoming the best compute units we have for parallel computing, making them perfect for neural networks and machine learning. Even though Nvidia had CUDA and a great research team behind it, they needed someone who could help strengthen the company's AI strategy for the coming decades. And in 2009, Dr. Bill Daly joined Nvidia to become chief scientist. Bill Daly has an extensive track record in the AI and neural networks field all the way back to the 80s and I highly recommend that you watch some of his lectures that are available on YouTube. But Daly did a lot more than just strengthen Nvidia's ranks in AI research. He implemented a culture of turning research into actual products all across the various Nvidia departments. This is a process that takes years and we're only now seeing the fruits of his influence at NVIDIA. When he joined in 2009, NVIDIA had just finished work on the ray tracing technology we see today in the RTX cards. It took them almost 10 years to turn it into a viable product. And in that time, NVIDIA's AI research team went from a team of 10 to now having 200 employees dedicated to this area. Clearly, NVIDIA are heavily invested in AI, and we'll see why this matters to gamers in a moment. Now you're probably thinking, this CUDA stuff is cool and all, and sure, NVIDIA have some talented scientists working for them, but what I really want is faster graphics cards that cost less. And if that's your thinking, I sympathize with you. And I know that right now the majority of PC enthusiasts don't really care about ray tracing or DLSS that much, especially when it comes with a ridiculous price tag. But unfortunately for us, we already saw that jumps in performance are getting smaller and smaller with each generation. So things like ray tracing and DLSS and other hardware-based features are going to be the focus of Nvidia in the coming years, rather than pure grunt performance. Nvidia is no different than any other company, their main goal is to drive demand for their products. So if performance increases will be difficult to sustain in the coming years, they need to find other ways of driving demand. We already know about ray tracing and DLSS, so what other hardware technologies will Nvidia push in future GPUs? And if the RTX cards are having such a lukewarm reception, how can Nvidia increase demand for their gaming GPUs if gamers only care about performance? Let me show you some interesting research from NVIDIA's labs. 
This is footage of a hockey game slowed down. You can see that the slow motion playback is choppy because it was recorded at 30 frames per second. Adobe Premiere lets us simulate smoothest slow motion by using a slow motion render technique called optical flow. So I ran this footage in my editing machine and this is the result I got. As you can see, even though some parts of the footage are fluid and the slow motion is more convincing, there are also some weird artifacts, especially when the player crosses the red goalposts. This is because Premiere's slow motion solution doesn't understand that the player is occluding the post. It just thinks that the player and the post are on the same plane. But have a look at the footage now. This was done using NVIDIA's slow motion neural network technology that their perception research team recently unveiled, which analyzes the image and can actually understand that the player is occluding the post, and therefore that the post should remain straight and static, resulting in less artifacts. Here's another example. You'd think that this footage was shot with a high-speed camera, but no, it's that same NVIDIA slow motion solution transforming 30fps footage into smooth slow motion that looks pretty much like what you'd get from an expensive super slow motion camera. How does this research translate into an actual product? This is somewhat similar to what is happening with DLSS, which takes a 1440p image and transforms it into 4K with minimal loss in quality. The difference is that the slow motion technology predicts what the extra frames in between existing ones should be, and DLSS creates extra pixels to predict what a scaled image should look like. But again, gamers care about performance, how is this relevant to performance? Well, the RTX 2070 isn't a card designed for 4K gaming. It can do 4K just like the GTX 1080, but it won't deliver consistent 60 frames per second gameplay. Unless, of course, if you use DLSS. DLSS will take a 1440p output and turn it into 4K with minimal loss in quality. So even though Nvidia weren't able to deliver the performance increase that gamers wanted to see in the RTX 2070 over the 1080 for instance, they are achieving a jump in performance of 30% by using deep learning. So can you see what's happening here? Nvidia could probably have launched the RTX cards with higher performance purely from architecture improvements, or they could have even moved to a new node. Instead, they are testing the waters with the RTX cards, laying the ground for a strategy that allows them to get performance improvements by implementing the research that is coming from their AI labs. It's a much more efficient way of using the already existing hardware. At some point in the near future, NVIDIA won't be able to extract much more performance from silicon alone, so they need to find other ways of maintaining their performance lead in the market. And ray tracing and DLSS are just the tip of the iceberg, because even more hardware-based technologies are coming in the next GPUs, and those will have the potential to change gameplay itself. How? Here's an example. We've all seen how stupid and buggy AI can be in games, resulting in some hilarious moments, especially in Bethesda games like Oblivion and Skyrim or Fallout. Ubisoft's Far Cry games is another series where the dumb AI actually makes the games interesting to play, at least for a few minutes until you get bored of how repetitive these games are. One example of how hardware can improve gameplay is in cover systems. You've probably experienced this in games where an enemy will take cover behind an object but leaves part of his body exposed, sometimes their heads, sometimes their butts. This is because the AI thinks that it's in cover. It's been programmed to sit behind an object, but it's computational too expensive and hard to analyze the resulting occlusion of every possible object that can serve as cover. If they are hiding behind a rock, for instance, the game can have different shaped rocks. And the same is true with vehicles and other types of cover. But with hardware dedicated to calculating occlusion, just like we saw in the hockey slow motion demo, game developers could have the means to analyze the shape of the cover from the viewpoint of the player and determine if the AI is fully in cover or if it needs to adjust its position. This becomes even more valuable in multiplayer games where the AI might be in cover from one player but be completely exposed to another. 
Another example are hitboxes. Sometimes you think you have clearance to shoot from behind a complex object like a vehicle, but a gap that appears clear is actually covered by its hitbox. With hardware dedicated to inference, hitboxes could be processed in a way where they match objects exactly as they appear to the player, resulting in more realistic experiences and less frustrating moments. During the RTX announcement, NVIDIA was very keen to show how many developers had already committed to using RTX and DLSS. A key element of this long-term strategy is to create a solid relationship with game developers and to create tools that are easy to implement. This is another area where NVIDIA are miles ahead of AMD. Their relationship with developers, thanks to their deep pockets and honestly better tools, allows them to push for the adoption of things like ray tracing and DLSS, laying the ground for future machine learning technologies that can be applied to games. So Nvidia are already ahead in performance and in mindshare, and they appear very well prepared for the future with different ways of achieving extra performance and better tools for developers. How can AMD compete with this? The good news for AMD is that they have their hardware in the PlayStation and Xbox, and most AAA games, at least for the time being, are developed for console first and optimized for PC after. There's nothing stopping AMD from taking the same route and to develop similar tools that are easy to implement and that take advantage of their console hardware, which can then be translated into the PC versions of those games. AMD really needs to stop wasting money sponsoring Formula One cars and start using their resources to hire top talent for their AI research team and they need to adopt the same NVIDIA strategy of turning research into actual products. We know that NVIDIA is abusing their market lead position in many ways. There was GPP, GIMP drivers on older cards, misleading rebrands, price gouging with the RTX ones, the list goes on. But whether you like them or not, when we look at NVIDIA, we see a company with a clear strategy for the future a company that has long been preparing for the end of Moore's Law. When we look at AMD on the other hand, we see a company trying to play catch up in all fronts and a company that constantly fails to have their tools adopted by developers. I honestly hope that in the coming months, AMD shows up to the fight with the proper tools to win it because as much as the stuff from Nvidia is promising for the future of gaming, if they continue to dominate the market unchallenged, Buying a GPU will soon become similar to buying a car. We will need to start getting finance to afford a good performing model. I hope you enjoy this video and if you like this content and would like to see more, consider supporting me on Patreon. If you can't spare a dollar a month, you can also help this channel by sharing this video on social media, subscribing and by giving this video a like. Thank you for watching and until the next one.